Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name's Grey, you're watching Console Tronics, where today I'll be taking a look at an important component at the retro video game experience, and that's the magazines that sprang up around this new and exciting craze during the 80s and 90s. And we're going to start with... Sega Power. Considered by many to be the authority on all things Sega and who famously upset a number of publishers in their time with their brutally honest review scores. So nearly always reviewed games later than other publications on account of their having to buy retail releases as early review copies were rarely sent their way. But before all that nonsense, the magazine was originally launched under the title of S the Sega magazine and here's the very first issue dated uh, give me a moment and I'll find out for you but yeah dated in the late 80s when the master system was really taking hold here in the UK and exclusively covering all things Sega it may have actually been the first magazine here in the UK to do so but before we have a look inside as much as I respect Sega power I have to be honest and say I was probably more of a fan of this one, Sega Force and its sister Nintendo title, N-Force. Yeah, Sega Force, they weren't around very long, maybe 15 or so issues. But the thing about them, they just had more of a sort of sleazy, late night kind of appeal to them. Plus, any of you old school uh, UK viewers watching this might be familiar with magazines like Zap and Crash that covered the Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum. Well, the in-house artist Oliver Frey, he was here doing the artwork for lots of the reviews in the magazine and he put a nice little uh, Japanese spin on things and as a wannabe comic book artist as a child I have to be honest and say I would spend days doodling copying Oliver Frey's pictures but uh, this is a Sega Power video so we're going to be taking a look at some of the issues that made up I mean this thing would run for almost a hundred issues uh, but before we dig into that, I do have some Japanese ma uh, magazines as well. Can't find all of them, but I did come across Mega Drive Fan. Yes, I might be looking at these and hopefully a few others because I do have some PC Engine Fan magazines uh, tucked away somewhere. But yeah, for now, let's get down to Sega Power. And here we have it, issue one of Sega Power. Now, a lot of you may have grown up reading this magazine, but I doubt very many of you actually remember it when it was still known as S, the Sega magazine, because, yeah, that's something that surprised me as well. Now, I mentioned something about the, the date of this issue. There's nothing on the cover, but down here we do see it came to us in October of 1989. And we have S the mascot we have reviews of uh, casino games wanted and wonder boy 3 not exactly a uh, stellar month but wonder boy 3 one of my all-time favorite master system games yeah um an early one i still think it's still one of the system's very very best priced at 27.95 uh yeah and clearly S, the Sega magazine thought it was pretty impressive as well because they gave it a four page review and a score of 92% which is a bit low to be honest graphics 91% sound 80% depth 97% and addiction 89% <laughs> so let's have a look what's happening monsters climb charts shock yes rampage was just released we have coming soon, ooh, let's have a look, uh, Psycho Fox, we have uh, Cloudmaster, mm, Tennis Ace, and down here we have some arcade screenshots from Super Monaco Grand Prix. Now, I'm not exactly sure how to uh, show off these magazines, if I'm perfectly honest, because originally I was just going to show the set. This is not my complete set, there's quite a lot missing, but it's a fair chunk of it. In the end, I think we'll just have a flick through and see what was going on back in Sega fandom in 1989. This is the inside story. It's uh, basically showing the innards of the Master System, what it was capable of. Yes, that's right. Kids used to actually concern themselves with things like that. We have casino games. Something I always kind of puzzled me as a kid. Why? Uh, it only got 57%. Why, like, uh, casino games and parlor games and all these games based on... Um, 
gambling, essentially, was so popular on computers. And we have, uh, oh, what's this? Tony Takauchi's Top 10. And he's on number one, Wonder Boy 3, number two, Power Strike, three, R-Type, four, Fantasy Zone. I like this guy. Ooh, we have uh, a What's Available Now section with Spook for Choice, Masters of New Releases. Let's have a look. We have Eyes, we have Poseidon Wars, we have Rastan, what's that? Vigilante, Bomber Raid, not great. Altered Beast, not great. California Games never played it. Time Zone was decent. Yes, whole slew of uh, Masters and Games. A little bit of sly help. We have Tips and Trips. I mean, Tips and oh, forget it. We have tips for Wonder Boy and Monsterland, Eyes, the Vanished Omens. We have maps for eyes. More maps. We have high schools. And we have scribblings. Subscribe. And at the back. Let's see if we can find their name down here. Uh, distributed by Virgin Mastertronic. That's right, I uploaded a video talking about Mastertronic and how they were the ones to make Sega the cool brand compared to Nintendo. Well, that's issue one. I don't know if it's issue two, threes, and fours somewhere, but let's jump forward a few months to when S should have been getting into their groove with a look at issue seven. In Enter the Fantasy Zone, discover the role-playing games that stretch your imaginations. So, let's have a look. Psycho Fox, we have advert for the Master System. Do me a favor, plug me into a Sega. Review of Operation Wolf, light gun game. Even ninety-one percent. Interesting. Uh, doing the monster mash. Hack and slay the Sega way. Oh, sorry. What's that? Competitions. Ooh, what's that? Ah, now this is a little special feature they were looking at. Role-playing games. Gorvelius, Miracle Warriors. Actually, they give review scores. Let's have a close look. Seventy-four percent for Gorvelius. Hmm, a little bit surprising. Fantasy Star. Ooh, what do they make of what I consider to be the greatest Master System game of all time? They gave it. Prepare to match your wits with the very best of the Sega Master System. The inlay says, and they could well be right, an excellent entertainment. Once you've teamed up with Odin, Noah and Mayu and built up some strength, it's like controlling an interactive movie. Brilliant. Yes it is. And some others. Miracle Warriors. Decent. What do they give it? There are... 77%. Ooh, we got more. Nice. The Manish Diamonds. Lord of the Sword. Spellcaster. Yeah, RPGs were a bit thin on the ground for the Master System, but Spellcaster is pretty good. What did they give it? 91%. Excellent stuff. Scribblings. Uh, I was actually going to read some of these letters, but uh, there's quite a few. Um, let's just stick with the pictures. GCHQ for Master System. Excellent game. They gave it ooh, 70%. Actually, why did they give it 70%? Graphics, 80%. Yeah. Sound 38 percent. Uh, I'd actually have to agree with that actually. Uh, depth 51 percent, mm -hmm. addiction 74 percent. Yeah, probably fair actually. That's the thing about Sega Power, they pulled no punches. Bomber Raid, a bit basic 82 percent. Captain Silver, almost unheard of nowadays 70 percent. Uh, what's that? Small lad. Oh, yeah. This is, before the internet, before eBay, this is how you buy and sell and trade your games for sale. Let's see what he's selling. Sega Games, Power Strike, Alex Kidd, Lost Stars, Alien Syndrome, Endure Racer, Time Soldiers, Ghost House, Super Tense, and Teddy Boy. Cards £8, carts £14. Hmm. Uh, what's this? Help. Help wanted on Wonder Boy 3. I can get Piranha Man and return to Central Village, but where do you go after that? In Miracle Wars, I found a key to heaven, but need locations to hell and earth. <laughs> Uh, I can only find seven pieces of map in Alex Kid High Tech World. Oh. Please can I have help as possible on how to get to the bottom left hand corner of the map in Alex Kid 3? Which one's just for Alex Kid 3? Now we can do a little bit of slight help. Oh, what is this? Wonder Boy? No, it is. Psycho Fox. Yeah. <laughs> SOS. Oh, this is Wonder Boy. This is Wonder Boy 2. That's the maps. Yeah, not the most exciting uh, thing you've ever seen, but uh, let's jump forward again. I actually saw, let's do one go to when they became Sega Power and really started to uh, impress me. Actually, let's jump forward a little bit more and see if we can find the first issue I actually bought. Uh, I remember seeing this one in the shops. 
Good. I think it was this one that I bought very first time around. I can't remember if this is the original copy or not, but this is dated May 1992. Ah, the good old days. Yes, now we get some sort of adverts. As you can see, they're well and truly on their way to being the UK's top Sega magazine. In fact, did they say that? Yes, they do. Britain's best-selling Sega magazine. So we have, let's have a look at what they're reviewing. We're looking at Test Drive 2, Kid Chameleon, Alicia Dragoon, Troubleshooter, Asterix, Wimbledon, Paperboy, Turbo Outrun, Popple, Space Harry, and Lucky Dime Caper. Yeah, a bit thin on the ground games. Ooh, what's this? A bit of news. Wonder Mega hits Japan. The all in one Mega Drive, Mega CD. We have uh, joysticks. Uh, didn't see the appeal of joysticks myself. Ooh, Mega CD, buy an import if you're thick. That's right, there was lots of uh, what so-called grey imports. They were called grey imports because it wasn't illegal to import them, but uh, basically you're taking sales away from official releases and UK if you bought a Japanese console, UK games wouldn't play on it. So, the shape of things to come. Ooh, previews. Virgin revealed new Terminator. A bit red, isn't it? Let's have a look down here. Flex those pets and save Sarah. Don't know who he is and who them are. I'll be back on the Game Gear and look at some of the animation. Nice stuff. We have, uh, what's that? That looks, oh, it's carrying on with Terminator. Uh, three games in one arcade smash hits. It can be done. More ads. What's this? Generation Terrorists. Ooh. Mega Power would be, uh, oh, they used to have a. Little comic strip they ran here, not great. Uh, but yeah, Sega Power used to be teamed up with uh, uh, little known uh, pop celebrities such as um, Right Said Fred and famously Kathy Dennis. What's all this? Oh, now we come to the reviews. Now we have Test Drive 2, a uh, game I got with my original Mega Drive. Excellent game. What did the Sega Power give it? Ooh, 89%. That's uh, a bit more than I was expecting them to give it actually. Let's see, this is for the Mars system, Asterix, looks like it's the first one. Check out them graphics, man. Yes, as you go through the level, excellent, excellent game. They gave it 92%, no faults, look at that, wow. Kid Chameleon, a favorite. Uh, 80%, what do they dislike about it? Far too, far too easy to finish, and therefore not very good value for money. Eh, <gasps> what the? Let me tell you something about Kid Comedian. I never finished it. This game is impossibly difficult. My younger brother finished it, but at great cost to his mental health. And we have Alicia Dragoon. Um, I put off playing this for a long, long time because I'm not really into fantasy. But uh, yeah, excellent game. 82%. Troubleshooter. Not familiar with this one. Uh, I think I might be under its Japanese title, but I'm not sure. Was this a US release? What's ch they reviewed the Japanese import. Oh, very nice. Wimbledon, the Mars system, tennis game, obviously, Paperboy, bloody hell, Paperboy was still knocking about even in what? 1992, my god. Uh, Turbo Outrun. <laughs> Turbo Outrun gets 31%. Um, I literally bought this game the other day, actually, and I'm glad I didn't. Uh, Popple was game gear. Popple was 92%. Yeah, I played that recently, actually. Um, very nice game. Space Harry on Game Gear, 86%. Let's have a look at some of the adverts at the back of the magazine. We have some new releases by Tengen. Yes, that's right. Atari was split up and part of them became Tengen. Uh, I think it was the arcade arm or the distributors. Let's have a look at some fan art. Sonic the Hedgehog. We have Sega Power montages of characters and Totem L picks. What else? Uh, what's that? Skittles. Those important extras, yes, folks. Um, the little add ons and things you could get for your system. Um, so look, Masters, I actually had that, it was awful, and they gave it three stars. Hmm, uh, light phaser, the joystick, which is actually pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. And we come to the mixer. Oh, I always wanted one of them infrared controllers. Yep, not exactly a new thing they've been knocking about since the days of the NES. Let's have a look. Well, oh, ah, this is interesting, sort of. <laughs> because one of the great things about Sega Power was they used to review every single game every month. They'd have this, the hard line, and they'd have little mini reviews of all the games. And I used to go through this. Oh my gosh. 
I used to read all of it and study this. What were the good games? What were the must-have games? What were the games to keep eyes out for? Uh, this is the Mega Drive we're looking at here. Sega Power's top 20 Mega Drive games of all time. Buck Rogers, really? Fantasy Star 3, nice pick. Uh, Shadow Darkness, again, nice pick. Speedball 2, Road Rash. Sonic, John Madden, Castle Illusion. Let's see if anyone picked any odd game. E uh, Toe Gemino, do an odd pick. Marvel Land, great game. Uh, Decap Attack, go on next to. Mm. Well, let's have a look at another one. I had no idea this video had been running so long. It's over 15 minutes already, so let's try and crack on, shall we? Um, here is issue. Actually, what issue is this? This is issue 31, and let me just bring your attention to this. Not approved by Sega UK. That's right. Uh, there would be an infamous story concerning Sega Power and one issue of Sega Force, although I forget which one it is, in which Sega Force reviewed a game early that was provided to them by Sega and gave it a whopping score of something like 92%. Football game called, uh, I think it was called Champions of Europe on the uh, Master System. Sega Power never got a copy, but when it was released at the shop, Sega Power picked it up and gave it a pathetic score of something like 10%. Uh, yeah, the game was awful and Sega Force were doing their thing for Sega by getting the exclusives they would give good magazine scores. Just um, just goes to show that it, it isn't a new thing with websites today giving preferential scores to games. But yeah, just quick flick through this one. I, I like this. With over 100 reasons to buy something mega and only 6 to buy something super, the choice is yours that's right in what date is this in june 1992 the super nintendo had just come out with a selection of six games and the mega drive at this time having over 100 but considering those six games for the snes were games like super castlevania 4 super mario world super tennis uh what else uh contra 4 yeah those six games were uh probably better than many other Mega Drive games out at that time. So let's have a quick look through this. We have, uh, let's have a look, uh, what's this? Gears on the Move, carry cases for the Game Gear. Famous Sega Addicts Part 1, that's Alan Smith, I think. Uh, what's this? Football games, actually, do they mention Champions of Europe? Yes, they do. Ooh, I won't read it, but uh, we'll look at it in a bit more depth uh, another time, I think. Oh, that's interesting. Let me just pull out a bit. Um, it wasn't just uh, reviews and all sorts of things like this that Sega Power would do. They would also publish original novelizations of very popular games. Now, I did a video where I shot off my collection of uh, novels of Sega games that came with Sega Power and other magazines. In fact, hold on one second. Enforce, Sega Force's sister title, would also release a, an original novelization of Street Fighter 2 to coincide with, I think it was the UK release of the game uh, on the Super Nintendo. And Sega Force, I don't have it to hand, unfortunately, but Sega Force wouldn't. Um but Sega Force wouldn't be the ones left out. They would release an original novelization of uh, Smash TV. But uh, back to this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Sonic versus Mario. I won't uh, read too much into this because I want to keep this video short. But yeah, basically they compare the two characters and uh, guess who wins? <laughs> uh, we have Captain Rewalk, which is power spelled backwards. Uh, let's have a look at some of the things. European Club Soccer. Now this isn't the game that uh, famously got Sega Force into a lot of trouble. This is a Mega Drive game. Give 68%. Yeah, football games on the 16 bits weren't exactly great. Super Off-Road. Uh, a classic arcade game. Ported to numerous systems. Uh, what version was this? This is the Mega Drive version. It got 60%. Ooh, shoot them up. Yes. Um, satisfy your lust for destruction in this smart shoot em up. UK official release, 84%. Double Dragon. Oh, I'm dreading looking at this. Ooh. <laughs> That's embarrassing. 30. Did they even give it any positive marks? Fans? Or in brackets, freaks and idiots will like it. Uh, that's it, really. <laughs> yeah, the Double Dragon games on the 16-bit saving weren't great. Ooh, Master System Heaven. Yes, sirree. Number one, Sonic. Two, Castle Illusion. Three, Lucky Dam Caper. See, I told you Lucky Dam Caper was awesome. Populous. Never really got into it. Uh, we've got games like Pac-Mania, R-Type, Psycho Fox, Impossible Mission, Columns. I don't think I ever played Columns. <laughs> Bubble Bobble. Yeah, another great game. Operation Wolf. What's that? Shinobi World. Did Shinobi World ahead of Miracle World? Uh, Golfer Mania. Again, yeah, another one. Popularity of golf games. John Montana. Game Gear. 69%. Pengo. 
actually it's pretty decent. Spider-Man, that's on the ooh, 84%. Fantasy Zone for Game Gear. Ooh, 56%, yeah. Sega Power. Sega Power told it like it was. This is tips, isn't it? The Prefs, Prof's Incredible Tip Lab. Now let's have a look. What's that? Convelius. Ro I'm missing a page. <clears throat> now, Lucky Dam Keeper. Tips. Castle Illusion. Tips. On and on we go. We'll look at one more. Ooh, here's something interesting. Danny Curley, the European Sega champ. Yeah, Sega used to run these competitions where the... Um, you could win top prizes by uh, playing Sega games. Uh, Danny Curley was the European champ. He would appear on episodes of Games Master. Um, let me think. But basically down here, he would just uh, play a game, get a top score, and then you could try and best it. And this chap did. What else? Football crazy going for gear. So now from the crowd, let's have a look at some adverts. Blah, blah, blah. Ooh, hard line again. This time the top games are all highlighted. Actually, while we're here, any of you watching this, have you ever heard of a game called, I forget, I think it's not with an S. Hold on, I'll find it. No, oh, let me come. Found it. Don't mind a review above it uh, called PGA Tour Golf. I'm interested in this. Fantasy Soldier 3 Import, £35. The review of it is here. Strider but without the knobs on. The action is just as enthralling and the smooth visuals are very atmospheric. With even more detail and with its fabulous cartoon sequences this is another undoubted winner. So what are you reading this for? Play it. Five stars. I can't find any information about this game whatsoever. Does anyone know what Fantasy Soldier 3 was known as? Um, because I can't find any information about it at all. I think I might have played it. I think it might be El Viento. Now, again, the novelizations. Ooh, artwork. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. Ah, uh, you can't beat it, can you? There's Sonic punching Mario in the face. There's him blowing him apart. Uh, what's this? Nintendo hero, Slaphead Plumber. Is he the prop's long lost son? Ooh, Alien 3 coming soon. <laughs> yeah, uh... 18 rated movies being watched by children again, not a new thing. Ooh, what's this comic strip? I need to lose some weight. You're right about that, you fat slag. Uh, we'll need to get rid of this flab. Hiya! Ha ha, who needs diet? <laughs> Sonic, Sega Power. Ooh, uh, yeah, I can't remember the name of the guy, but someone used to send in the sort of Japanese influenced little comic strips. Um, I'll have a look, see if I can find any. Uh, about an original character called Pepsi Sega, and Sega Power used to publish his little cartoon strips, and uh, I actually became a bit of a fan. Shall we look at some more? Uh, the video's gone on for a bit too long, but we have, um, what's he called again? Green Dog. And there's Right Said Fred again, being endorsed by Sega Power. We have, what's this? Driving Ambition. Can EA take pole position with Lo Lotus Turbo Challenge? That popular Amiga game. We have, uh, there's Kathy Dennis. Ride harder. Win a motorbike. Hmm. What else have we got? We've got Goal. I think this is a review of Kickoff. I don't know. Um, what's this? I think that's the editor. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, they're talking about Street Fighter 2. Looks like Sonic 2 reviewed Top Secret Savers. I didn't even know that had a game. So let's have a look at what they're reviewing in this one. Land of Illusion. That's the sequel to uh, Castle Illusion on the Master System. Football. Never heard of it. Streets of Rage 2. Ooh, ooh, ooh. PGA 2 Golf 2. Shackham. Captain America. Outlander. Toxic Crusaders. George Foreman's KO Boxing. Uh, let me tell you from experience that game is shit across every platform. Ooh, Power Athlete. So I think we'll make this the last one. Introducing the Sega LD. Ooh. That is, in fact, a Pioneer Laser Active, a Laserdisc based console. Um, in fact, I was meaning to make a video on that, but obviously I don't have the console. But yeah, um, you can see the Sega controller plugged in to the front. Basically, it had interchangeable uh, sockets in the front, and you could put in a thing that would let you play Mega Drive cartridges on it, or even PC Engine Hue cards. And obviously, uh, it could play CDs or uh, Laserdiscs. Pioneer being the only company to manufacture laser discs, and when was this dated? April 1993, and they're still making these machines. But laser disc would run into what? 2000? Okay, we're getting, we're, we're straying from the points. Ooh. 
virtual reality that's right in the 90s virtual reality was seen as the next big thing but it would be uh, what 2017 or 2016 before it would actually become commercially viable advert for micro machines what's that shape of things to come previews over looks at james bond the jewel uh, no clue what that is uh oh it's desert strike i think open strike i forget uh, hate flight sims can't stand them hardball 3 never really wait there's no screenshots there are screenshots for golf games instead oh is that it on the other side uh, power challenge what's that coming soon arcade oh this is what's in the arcades we have golden axe what oh that might be the second arcade machine blah 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 blah, blah. some spinning arcade machine what is that that looks like what you're racing and the reviews okay let's look at some reviews land of illusion what did they give it boom shot 93 percent i told you this game was freaking awesome and you didn't believe me what's this jerry glanville's pigskin football 44 percent not really familiar with that one oh, 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 the daddy streets of rage 2 uh 92 percent makes sense what's that championship pro am decent game actually 63 percent power athlete now this was an early street fighter 2 clone but it had some pretty impressive graphics and had a fatal fury style jump into the foreground background effect unfortunately it's limited move sets limited special moves and all that uh meant it was always going to be seen as a pale imitation but i think this was came out long before uh street fighter 2 did on the mega drive this being a uk power release and it got 54 percent super battle tank 47 percent George Foreman's KO Boxing. Ooh, 39%. What's this? Ooh, Toxic Crusaders. I'm not really familiar with this. I do sort of remember the cartoon series at the time. Um, I have seen a lot of trauma films in my time. Uh, the Toxic Avenger. This was the kiddie version, Toxic Crusaders. And it got 72%, which isn't bad, to be honest. Outlander, what's that, a driving game? I think I might have played that. 74%. No real big scores, really, in this, um, except for Streets of Rage 2, really. 61%. What's this? If you've, if you're seen with nothing else, be seen with PC format. Uh, this is long before the PC would, uh, take control. Shakan, again, I enjoy. 83%, I mean. GTA 12 2, 79%. I think that's pretty soon. The Mega PC, yeah. Uh, like the Pioneer Laser Active, I wanted to talk about this. It's basically a bog standard uh, PC, but had a built in Mega Drive. So, yeah, you can put your Mega Drive cartridges in it and play away. That tips. One video's gone on for too long. Galahad, uh, Mega Drive game, PC, uh, Amiga port. Any three tips for what looks like the Master System? We have, what's that? Consultation. More tips. Is that a preview? No oh, tips, the game is already out. Total, another Nintendo magazine. Hardline, again. Da -da 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 -da. What a drive. Not really that many advert stuff to really show off about games here. Shall we look at one more magazine? Well, we jump forward a couple of years to look at this. 1995 preview of the year actually what's this cover dated it is must be march 1995 so it would have come out around february no deposit okay, what's this, renting games? all right very quickly let's have a look at what was inside they should be looking at saturn games uh as well we have rise of robot samurai showdown tama not sure familiar with that one cosmic carnage on 32 x yeah that was still knocking about bonkers on mega drive restart mega drive uh brett hull hockey Unnecessary Roughness, never heard of it. Afterburner, 32X, Mighty Max, Beavis and Butter, ESPN. Yeah, once we get to like the dates like 1994, 1995, um, 1996 even, there would be a lot of Mega Drive games released that kind of got swept under the carpet because the Saturn was being pushed and being pushed hard and actually was neck and neck in sales with a PS1 in the early months of its release 1995 oh my gosh now i do feel old what's this adam's family values hmm. is that family values released in 1985 really what's that animal something psycho pinball never really played pinball games oh wayne's world on video batman and robin 
The battery in my camera just died. I think it's trying to give me a hint. So while I've still got some juice left, I thought we'll finish this video with a look at one of the last issues of Sega Power from 1995. This isn't the final one. It would run, well, limp on for another couple of issues before having another name change, this time to Saturn Power. And I think you can all imagine how that went. Yes, this is, um, actually, what's the date on this? Um, I can't tell he's in the way. It is a... What this is from 1995, so we're in the time of 32 bit. Um, and light is becoming an issue, it's getting dark here at half past three in the afternoon. So, very quickly, we're looking at NBA Jam Tournament Edition. This is for the Mega Drive, and we're going to just have a look at some of the last reviews. Uh, what did this give it? Oh, it's quite long. This one actually, what does it give it? I think I gave it 91%. Never been a fan of basketball games myself. We've got a review of Mortal Kombat 2 for the 32X, no less. 90%. And it does look the business. Road Rash 3. Uh, but was it the finest in the series or a disappointment? Ooh, 78%. Um, yeah, not a bad game, actually. Story of Thor. Oh, I forget what this is called in America. It's called Story of... Uh, no, it's called Beyond Oasis in America. Uh, an excellent RPG. I never heard of it until I played the sequel on the Saturn. It got 93%. Excellent game. We have Skeleton Crew. Is this a port of an Amiga game? I can't remember, but it got 86%. One worth checking out. Uh, Mega Swift, 64%. Super Swift's not too bad. Uh, NFL Quarterback, another American football game, 91%. Ultimate, uh, another magazine. Championship Motocross. This is for 32X again. Anyone who thought the 32X was popular? Metalhead. Is this 32X again? It is. 76%. Bloody hell. Uh, this must have been shortly after its release. This is Greatest 36 Holes Golf. Can't see. Oh, there it is. 81%. Uh, advertising the Jaguar. Save £30. Get it for £199. I got mine with a stack of games for £30 from Wembley Market. Only a two years later. We have Crime Patrol for the Mega CD. Bloody hell, I was still making Mega CD games. 79%. We have Clockwork Knight, Saturn, launch title, 57%. <laughs> Not great. Uh, what's this? Ooh, some. Is this mini reviews? What's this? Uh, ooh, yeah, it is. Fatal Fury Special, 84%. Mickey 3, Legend of Illusion. How many of you knew it was a trilogy of Castle of Illusion games? 94% restart, excellent game, 87%. As you can see, the uh, Mega CD 32X Saturn games are getting the full page treatment while the Mega Drive is being squashed into the centre pages here. We have Beavis and Butted, 72%. Uh, Mr. Nuts, uh, didn't know that was on the Mega Drive to be honest, but he got 69%, I thought it was a SNES exclusive, power tip, okay then we'll just quickly skim through this because you all must be getting pretty bored isn't by now, but we've got tips of Virtua Fighter 2, back issues, nice artwork there, but Judge Red, who's the artist on that, that is, oh god I can't remember his name, not Colossus Square, the other fella, <laughs> uh, what's this? Oh yeah, they were trying anything to, to get new readers here. They were, they were re reviewing films, books, all sorts. Uh, adverts for, what's that, 32X, 149.99. And you need to fork out for a Mega Drive as well. What's that, the Doom Pack, 229.99. Actually, um, I was actually impressed with the launch lineup of the Jaguar, but that's for another video. Uh, what's this, what? No clue. Oh, is that Hattie Hayridge? We'll find out after. Uh, what's that advertisement for Sega Saturn? The Jam, Street Racer, and the movie Stargate starring Kurt Russell. Yeah, do you remember when that was the Mutt's Nuts? So, this has been my uh, Sega Power Collection video. Uh, like I said, it's not my complete collection, I do have a heck of a lot more. But, um, yeah, uh, I will be looking at more magazines in the future. Um, like Sega Force, I definitely, actually, can I dig it out here? Bear with me one moment, I'll let you look at these lovely magazines while I try and find a magazine here. It's actually the last issue. This is the last issue of the very first video game magazine I ever bought, Raze. And I won't be offended if you've never heard of it, because I think I was the only person who bought this. You know, uh, yeah, this was a multi-format magazine, uh, released in about 1990, ran for 12 issues, so it ran for a calendar year. But look, it reviewed games for Atari, Lynx and 7800, and the early issues it was even reviewing games for the Amstrad GX4000. I love this magazine so, so much. This is what really got me into video gaming in a big way. And 
they were focused on the Japanese scene. Yes, folks, but that's for another video. This has been going on far too long. Look at all this stuff here. This is some pure nostalgia overload here, folks. Look at that. Second Samurai. Kick it. Desert Strike 3, um, Urban Strike, Micro Machines, look at all this beautiful stuff. Um, yeah, if you're into uh, video game magazines, then, um, well, they're getting hard to get come by these days, actually. But, um, yeah, I'm waffling now. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to put links to other videos I've done like this in the past, where I looked at retro game books and guides and other odds and sods. There should be links on screen now. So, um, let me just say, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and bearing with me. Um, I hopefully will try and make it a little bit more professional when I uh, watch this back and <laughs> see all my m many mistakes and try and present these magazines in a much more um, entertaining fashion, shall we say. But um, if you've with me for this long thank you thank you thank you you must have the patience of a saint but anyway i'm out of here thank you for watching goodbye